Since the tissues and organs of the body consist of only two elements, cells and cell products, both deserve careful and thorough study. The initial exercise should be to examine the morphology of a cell. The following observations should be made in examining a variety of cell types. 1. Shape of the cell. 2. Size of the cell. 3. Shape, size, and position of the nucleus, and identification of the nucleolus, if present in the nucleus. It is absolutely essential that the boundary of the cell and the nucleus be clearly defined. To help in this endeavor, examine a section of the ovary. The ovary contains extraordinarily large cells, referred to as ova. This is a section of the ovary. This is the external boundary of the ovary on this particular section located at and indicated by the arrow. If one proceeds into the cortical region of the ovary, a narrow band of cells can be found. These are the ova. The ova are these extraordinarily large spherical cells as indicated at the tip of the pointer. Go down and examine these particular large cells in detail at higher magnification. These large spherical structures here are individual cells, one being located at the tip of the pointer, another located here, another here, another there, and so on and so forth. So these are extraordinarily large cells to clearly identify or have organized in your own mind what these structures. Looking at this particular field, once again at increased magnification, this structure here indicates the perimeter or the overall uh, circumference of an individual cell. So this indicates a cell. This structure here is representative of the cell. This is this large spherical structure and uh, this one over here as well. What can be demonstrated in this particular field is the cytoplasm of a cell, the nuclear envelope, which begins at approximately this location, indicating the nu nucleus located here, and then this dense round structure within the center of the nucleus actually represents the nucleolus. Similar structures can be demonstrated or seen in this particular uh, ovum as indicated by the pointer. Note another feature that is shown in this particular field. Not all of the ova show a nucleus or a nucleolus. And in this particular case, we only have a grazing section to the nucleus. And in this particular section of this oocyte, the nucleus is absent. Absent only from the field of view, because these cells are so large and spherical in shape that once a section comes through them, it may go on either side of the nucleus and it is not visible in a two-dimensional section. Now having made those observations, move the field on your particular uh, section and look at s yet smaller cells. This band of structures here, as indicated by the pointer once again, is a collection of several cells. Nonetheless, the nuclei can be made out quite clearly as well as on occasion the nucleolus as shown here or perhaps here and here. Find a field similar to this one and examine it in detail. At increased magnification several uh, features can be illustrated. Once again identify the nucleus, the boundary of the cytoplasm which is approximately here, and nucleoli if they are present. Note that in some regions the cells are closely packed together and cytoplasmic boundaries cannot be discerned. When this is, uh, condition is encountered, use the profile of the nucleus to give you a sort of an indication of the overall shape of the cell. So this is the individual nucleus of a cell. The cytoplasmic boundaries are very indistinct but are approximately here. So when this type of a case is encountered, 
use the nuclear profile as an indicator of the shape of the cell and the cytoplasmic boundaries are then are somewhat estimated though they can be uh, seen a little bit in uh, some of these cells. Having done that, go to a, a, an example that is perhaps even a little bit more difficult. If we uh, retrace our steps and begin uh, or go to where we uh, begin our observations. This entire field is comprised of cells closely packed together. This is the initial oocyte that was examined, showing very clearly the approximate region of the nuclear envelope the nucleus, nucleolus, and then cytoplasm going out to about this uh, where the tip of the arrow is indicating. These are nuclear profiles of surrounding cells. In this particular case, the cytoplas cytoplasmic boundaries cannot be uh, discerned very well, very clearly, but you can still see the shape of the nucleus quite well. Stained uh, this deep basophilic color. In this particular case, this is the nuclear profile. The cytoplasmic extent cannot be determined visually, and one assumes that this is a spindle, this nucleus belongs to a spindle shaped cell, and its cytoplasmic boundaries probably extend from here out to here, and it's a uh, spindle shaped cell. As are all these, as indicated by the uh, pointer, cut at different angles. So these are some of the problems that are encountered uh, when examining a tissue under the microscope. The nucleus stains basophilic. Usually when one sees a sort of a clumped nuclear pattern, this, is, this clumped, deep colored material is referred to as heterochromatin. The lighter type of material in the background, the more active form of DNA, is oftentimes referred to as euchromatin. Another excellent place to look in the examination of very large cells is within the spinal cord. This is a section of spinal cord. This large area here is largely made up of what is referred to as white matter. The place to look to identify the very large cells is in the ventral horn of the gray matter, which lies at the interior of the spinal cord. Looking at this particular field, even at the, with the scanning objective, these small or very large, excuse me, irregularly shaped objects are large cells referred to as neurons that are of the same size, if not larger, than the ova. Examine these very large cells or neurons for the same cytological features as observed in ova. This is a nerve cell or neuron, a nerve cell located at the tip of the pointer here, one here, and one here. Note in this particular case that the cytoplasm is drawn out into very large elongated processes called dendrites, or and occasionally an axon may also be observed but we can't distinguish one from the other on this particular section. Note that the nuclear profile can be observed in some of these cells as well as the dark central round body, the nucleolus, in the center of the nu uh, nucleus. The same field of cells seen at increased magnification showing the cytoplasmic extent of these cells drawn out into these large processes, very irregular in shape, and within the center, usually, this light clear vesicle, the nucleus, and contained within this particular cell, the nucleolus, as is, it is present in this particular uh, nerve cell here. Nucleus, or nucleolus, excuse me, nucleus, and then surrounding cytoplasm. When examining tissues and cells, one must keep a a mental profile of any cell division or mitotic uh, profiles that are observed. An excellent place to observe mitotic activity, to familiarize uh, oneself with the various mitotic figures, is within the small intestine. 
This is a section through the small intestine. The arrow indicates the position of the lumen. So the intestinal mucosa is shown here at the arrow, where the arrow indicates. This is the particular region of this section uh, one should examine. In particular, if looking at the arrow, these simple tubular glands, the intestinal glands, or crypts of Lieberkuhn, is the area where mitotic activity is greatest. So this is a, shows you a lengthwise cut through one of these simple tubular glands. These profiles, though they're round, made up of a round collection of cells, also are intestinal glands, but are cut at different angles. Uh, for example, this rounded profile would be a simple tubular gland, but it's cut at an angle across here, if I can use this to, uh, to demonstrate. So look within the epithelium, or the cells making up the wall of these simple tubular glands for the mitotic figures. This represents, a incre at increased magnification, a simple tubular gland, as indicated by the pointer. Note, you can see it's made up of a cellular wall. The nuclear profile is indicated here by the tip of the pointer. And the cytoplasmic extent of these cells is also shown, which reaches about this far. Even at this magnification and in intermediate power, numerous dark, intense staining objects can be made out. These are the chromosomes of several mitotic figures. Let's look at these at increased magnification. This is that same tubular gland seen at increased magnification. The nuclei making up this gland are located, of cells making up this gland are located here. The cytoplasmic extent goes to about the tip of the arrow, right along this boundary. This is a mitotic figure, as is this one, and as is these over here, and these intense bodies. So these intense bodies are actually the chromosomes. What is shown in this particular field is early anaphase, later anaphase, the cytoplasmic extent of these dividing, uh, this dividing cell is about, uh, as in the extent of the cytoplasm is where the pointer is indicating. One chromosome, uh, chromosomal mass for this daughter cell located here, the other one here. So this is roughly an earlier anaphase, a late anaphase, and then perhaps where the, uh, the chromosomes are starting to dissolve here a little bit, separating into two different cells, probably a late telophase at that particular location. Probably a metaphase uh, here, the cytoplasmic boundary being here, and then the chromosomes lined up along an equatorial plate. So this is the position or the place to look for these mitotic figures because of the extraordinary number within these uh, simple tubular intestinal glands. One should familiarize uh, oneself with recognizing, uh, first of all, mitotic figures, and if possible, uh, put an identification on uh, each one of these mitotic figures. There's a mitotic figure here, one here, one here, one here as seen and then in, in these uh, simple tubular glands.